President Donald Trump's New York fraud bond has been cut from $454 million to $175 million. Let's talk about it. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about President Donald Trump's New York quote unquote fraud bond being cut from an astronomical, ridiculous, impossible to satisfy amount of four. 154 million U.S. American cold hard cash dollars down to 175 million. And also he has more time to pay because let's understand what's happening. Today was a deadline for him to pay the original amount of $454 million. And if he was not able to pay it, then they were going to start to seize assets. They were going to take things like, I don't know, Trump Tower, Maybe the cash in his pocket, his credit card, debit card, whatever. They were going to take things from him to satisfy the bond amount. That was going to be today. Now he has 10 more days to pay it. And rather than paying the 454, it's now a more realistic, but still ridiculous $175 million. Now understand this. Trump was going to need to pay the money in full. When you have a bond, normally you go to a bail bondsman, and that's what he tried to do. His lawyer said he went to 30 surety companies, which is the same thing as a bondsman. They may use surety companies, and essentially he would pay them a percentage of the amount, 10%, 20%, and then they would front the entire thing. And when he beats the case, he wouldn't pay the whole thing. If he loses the case, that would be a different story. But he was not able to get any money from the surety companies the money is too high. Nobody has that kind of money in cash in their pocket. You could be a billionaire. That does not mean you have a billion dollars in bank account. You may have assets like Trump Tower and Trump Doral and other things that equal up to a billion or more. That's kind of how it works. And I think this case sought to bankrupt Trump and it sought to have him sell off his assets, even though he will probably beat the case and there'll be no need for the assets to be sold. So now that's what's happening. Now there's a lot more we're going to get into where we're going to get into a few things like they want to sell certain properties to satisfy the crazy bail amount. Although the whole essence of this case is that he is over inflating the value of his properties. Let's back up a little bit and speak on that. As we show the article right here and you see the headline, Trump New York fraud bond cut to 175 million in appeal from 454 million U.S. American cold hard cash dollars. Now, the case against Trump in New York is that he was overinflating the value of his properties to defraud banks in order to get loans and things of this nature. A lot of real estate guys are upset at the ruling because this is how the entire industry works. It's not fraud; it's a matter of opinion when you are placing the value on the property. There's no real way to know what the value of a property is until someone buys it. But you can get a general idea of what it's worth. And it's not just Trump saying, okay, my value is, is this, my property is worth that. The bank's got to come out and evaluate it. He has to say what he thinks it is. They negotiate back and forth, and then they figure out what it's worth, and you're able to get financing that way. That's the way the entire industry works. It's not just Donald Trump. It is the entire real estate industry. So this case is bogus from the beginning. And I'm going to play some video here that'll let you know that for 100% certainty when it comes down to them wanting Trump to pay these large, crazy numbers. But let's get to some bullet points here. A New York appears court paused for 10 days, a massive civil fraud judgment against former President Donald Trump. The court also and sharply reduced the bond he would have to post to obtain a longer stay to $175 million. Trump's lawyers in the court filing last week said that it was impossible for him to get an appeal bond of $454 million to satisfy the judgment in that amount, having approached more than 30 surety companies, that's the bail bonds type situations, and nobody was able to give him the money. Because you're talking about a lot of these bail bonds, surety companies, or whatever, I mean, how much are they going to be dealing with? Maybe a million dollars? Okay, <laughs> uh, that max 454. Has there ever been a case like this where you got to post a bond of that much? 
just before there's even like it, it, like this is this whole thing is really really crazy and i think the appellate courts ultimately should throw the whole thing out because this is just bogus the way this whole thing played out is crazy now let's get to a news clip this is before the appellate court made the decision about the 175 million versus 454 million they're going to get into uh, the the facts of what's happening on today and beforehand and some things may not necessarily be told the right way if they get anything wrong i'll correct them and if you want to see this clip and read any articles of course everything will be in the description if you're on ig visit the link in the bio go to the correspondent article on the website but without further ado let's go ahead and roll it so the deadline is here for Donald Trump to post a nearly half billion dollar bond in a civil fraud case. Marilyn Rivera live in Washington with more on other legal issues he's facing today. Marilyn, good morning. Hey, good morning, Bob and Jen. So that's right, the 30 day grace period for him to pay up the nearly $500 million bond in his New York civil fraud case. And today, if he can't pay, he risks having his assets seized and bank accounts frozen. But there's also another development regarding his hush money payments case. Donald Trump. So they're talking about two separate cases in this particular news clip. The first one is the real estate, quote unquote, fraud in New York with the crazy $400 million, now $175 million bond. And the second one is about Stormy Daniels and the whole hush money kerfuffle. There's so many court cases going on and it's all BS and we know why these cases are happening. But let's continue returns to a New York City courtroom today for a hearing to further delay a criminal trial related to his hush money payments case after it was postponed due to a last minute evidence dump. His attorney is asking the judge to delay the case till summer or throw it out altogether. It comes as Trump tries to avoid a financial crisis. That case should be thrown out. The Stormy Daniels, all these cases should be thrown out. But the Stormy Daniels, I mean, really, like, what is the actual beef there? There's, there's no there there. Related to a $454 million judgment in his civil fraud case. I would think that the president feels some desperation right now. If he doesn't post bond by today, New York Attorney General Letitia James could start seizing his assets unless he is granted a stay until his appeals are exhausted. In a filing last week, Trump's legal team says he does not have enough cash to make the payment and could not get a loan despite asking 30 different lenders. His son Eric alleges this entire case comes down to politics. No one's ever seen a bond this size, every single person when I came to them saying, hey, can I get a half billion dollar bond? Maria, they were laughing. Despite the legal battles. Because it doesn't make any sense. Like I said, a bond, like the most you're going to see, I mean, even for guys that then, you know, I mean, some some heinous, like the if, if you actually get a bond and you've committed a heinous crime, it's going to be like a million dollars at, at most. And that's still high. Four hundred fifty four million, even the one hundred and seventy five million these things, what, what's happening right now, it's just a political attack against the president. That's all. It's a political attack. They're trying to make him sell off his assets like Trump Tower, things of this nature, to bankrupt him. So he's not able to have the assets and he's able to just give his wealth over to New York City, New York State, and have them spend it on whatever they want to spend it on. Maybe you can give a billion dollars to the mayor's wife and have her lose it, but different story. James has filed judgments in Westchester County, New York, where Trump's golf course and Seventh Springs Estate are located, a sign she could be eyeing those properties. Trump says he's willing to take. I mean, what kind of nonsense is that? So the attorney general has this really high bond amount, $400 million, now 175, and you have your eyes on specific properties. This could be a thing that comes from the hires up, even beyond Letitia James. Okay, we want to get this guy. We want to steal his properties from him. So have this bogus case that the, some of the public may support because they've been told orange man bad. We're going to use that as a means to just steal property from him, to steal his assets. It's crazy. To challenge his judgment all the way to the Supreme Court, Bob and Jen. Right, and, and tomorrow the appellate court is set to hear this case, right? So how does that play into this? Well, it's one of the options that Trump has right now, right? He's appealing this case to a higher court. So there are some options for him still in terms of how he could potentially handle this 500, nearly $500 million bond. There's also a chance that he could sell properties, but he has publicly ruled out that option, at least for now, because he says that would cause him irreparable damage if he does win on appeal. There's 
Absolutely, because look, if I sell, that, that's 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 the point. If I sell my property to satisfy the bond, when I win the case, which I'm going to win the case, the property I can't get the property back. I got the money, but I don't want the money. I want the property because I have equity. It's going to grow. It's an asset. I'd rather have the asset that is continuing to appreciate rather than the money that is just cash. I, I don't want the cash. I want the actual property. And I don't want to even have to do with this at all because it's bogus from the beginning. There's also the possibility that he could declare bankruptcy, but the chances of him doing so, a man who has built his reputation and brand around wealth, there's a, there's a very low likelihood that he will be taking that option. I know there's some question about whether he should take Truth Social public. Right, right. Yeah, so that is actually going public, but he could potentially get a windfall of up to three and a half billion dollars, potentially four billion dollars. But there's a lock of agreement here, and that prevents him from selling his shares for the next six months. And I've been talking to a lot of business experts who say that even with this lockup agreement, like he could go, a former President Trump could go up to the board and ask them to waive this lockup agreement, but the chances of them doing so are very low because if he sells any shares, that comes causes the company's shares to tank. So that's not really in the interest of the company. For no, they're, not, they're not going to do that. They're not going to sell. Truth, that's that's going to be something that he's not, he's not going to touch. What's going to happen is he's going to go through the court process and get this whole thing resolved that way. Him to do that. So that's one of the things. In addition, I was also um, getting this from a business law uh, professor. They also say that because former President Trump is a majority shareholder in the company, the amount of shares they can actually sell once he is able to do so, the amount of shares that he'll be able to do so is limited within a certain time frame. So he won't be. So that's what's going on there. Now, I got to play one more video for you guys. Because remember, this whole case is based on Trump, quote unquote, over inflating the value of his properties. Oh, Mar-a-Lago is only worth $5 million, $18 million, whatever they want to say. They were saying that Mar-a-Lago is not worth that much, that Trump Tower is not worth that much. Now, look at how CNN changes their tune when they see that they can possibly get a lot of money from him from these properties. Check it out. At least 30 days to get any of these properties sold. Um, but the property that you alluded to, Mar-a-Lago, uh, potentially, that could be something that could be sold quickly. I think the valuation is something in the hundreds of millions, and I think there could be a buyer for some. So why is it a problem when you say it, but it's a problem when Trump says it? I don't understand. And as a matter of fact, let's just look at what they put on the screen. So they're saying mar lago is worth $240 million. Isn't that a lot more than what they were trying to say before? Oh, it's only worth $18 million. Now it's worth $240 million. Okay. All right, so that's funny. And then you have Trump Doral, 305, 40 Wall Street, 270, Mar-a-Lago, 246 East, 57th Street, 175, Trump Tower, 160. If Trump says this, then he's overinflating and he's committing some kind of real estate fraud. But when CNN says it, when when Letitia James says it, all of a sudden it's fine and he should sell it and give the money over to meet the bond. Totally dumb, totally ridiculous, but... As I close, I want to say this. This is crazy, man. You're talking about different tiers of justice. Uh, this is an absolute miscarriage of justice. This is lawfare being used against the president. It doesn't matter if you like Trump or hate Trump. This should not be accepted, especially not in a so-called first world place like the U.S. of A. This is clear banana republic BS. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on what's happening here with the former president and what's going on with the, the real estate fraud and the, the bail amounts and all kind of stuff? Is it legitimate? Is it illegitimate, bogus, whatever you want to call it, whatever your thoughts are? Let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. This is simply a way to try and rob him to steal assets from him because I think ultimately this is all going to be over with. He's going to beat it on the pill. There's no problem. But if he has to sell assets, the assets are going to be gone. You got the money back, but you don't have the assets, which is the most important thing. This is really crazy, and it should not be accepted by anyone in any kind of free nation at all. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.